Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a follow-up review for you on this little guy here. This is the SIN 104 STSAI on the uh, SIN H-Link bracelet. So this is a watch that I've now owned for about six months now, and unfortunately, I've decided it isn't going to stick around in my collection. That said, it's still got a lot of good. It's still got a lot of bad. And it's unfortunately still got some ugly. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about my ongoing feelings for this watch and why I've decided against it. So in terms of what's still good about this watch, there's still a lot of good here. Um, I do like very, very much the countdown bezel. I mentioned this in the review, and although it's a little bit of a gimmick, it's a nice gimmick. If you know that your pizza's getting here in 45 minutes, you move this little guy so that the minute hand points at the 45, and then you know that whenever the minute hand gets here, you got pizza. Or if you're on a long plane flight, you can just set it for the hour hand, so that way when the hour hand gets there, you're good to go. Um, it's just a nice little thing, and the fact that it's bi-directional, unlike your diver's bezels, just makes it a little bit easier to use. And so I like the countdown bezel a lot. Another thing I really like is the day-date function. It seems a little bit unnecessary, um, maybe to some, but it's surprisingly easy for me to forget what day of the week it is. I, I live a strange life, so maybe that's unique to me. But nonetheless, that's nice. And so when I'm wearing a watch that doesn't have day date, I always feel a little discombobulated. Um, the third thing that I've come to appreciate is the mechanical aspect of it. This is a mechanical watch, so it's got the little spinny gears in there, and balance wheel and everything like that. And in many ways, this watch, I, I kind of get it now. This is a watch that does feed off of your, your own energy. It puts, you, you, you keep this alive. And that does lend it a feeling of heart and soul that uh, a quartz watch just doesn't have, because this is going to be just fine. The Oceanus, if I leave it on a shelf for six months, this guy isn't. And so that does give a certain intimacy to the act of wearing a watch that uh, you don't get in a quartz. So I get it. And, you know, I can respect very much why the mechanical guys love the mechanicals in that way. That's nice. Um, and then finally, on the good front, I really, really do like the loom of this watch um, because it's great. It's it's honestly just stellar. Um, you charge the loom before bed and it's still going at like 7 a.m. the next day. I mean, even right now, you can see I just shielded a little bit and it's glowing brightly in there. The loom on this watch is great and it's spoiled me in many ways for loom and other watches. Um, and I, I've come to appreciate and love that very much. The thing that's greatest, though, for me on this watch is the legibility. There's not much going on on the dial, unlike anything that Rolex makes. Um, and you've got these big white ends on a black background with these big white indices. Um, it's really easy to look down at a glance. You can look down with your glasses off. You can look up at the middle of the night and see the nicely loomed legibility going. This is just an excellent, excellent watch. I mean, it's even got the ledge of the little marker here over on the three o'clock side, unlike a lot of watches which don't have a marker, just a date window there. It's a beautiful thing. I'm a huge, huge fan of that in this particular watch. Um, that's, that's just nice. So the legibility for me is the number one thing I love about the SIN 104 here. It's so damned easy to read that uh, it, it, it's, it's nice. And the syringe hands, it's just a nice face. I like the watch a lot in that way. However, unfortunately, there is still some bad and some ugly that remains from my prior review. Of course, the things that I said were bad previously still are, but there are a couple of things that have, I don't know what the opposite of growing on you is, but have, uh, have shrunk on me. Uh, that I now feel are worse than I may have initially stated. Um, the first of these is the polished center links here. This looks great when the bracelet is new, 100%. Um, but the thing is, these polished links scratch up, and they're really hard to restore. I mean, I can rub at them with a you know piece of leather with a little bit of diamond paste on there and uh, restore a little bit of the sheen, and in fact, I've done that. But once you get a kind of deeper scratch into it, like, uh, let's see, right here, you can see, there you go. It's just not coming out. Um, and that's honestly frustrating because it makes the watch seem to age a little bit more than it needs to. Uh, unlike, for instance, a surface like this, I don't love the clasp, we'll get there, but at the very least with this guy, if you get scratches on there, and I have, you can just kind of hit it with a scotch bright pad and it'll kind of polish off those scratches a little bit and rebrush the metal. Um, the fact that it's polished here too, is really unpleasant. Uh, that takes scratches like nobody's business, and it doesn't need to be. Honestly, it looks really ugly uh, in that way when you scratch it up. 
Speaking of the, 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 the clasp here, I'm not a big fan of the clasp because the rest of the watch is very, uh, is very geometric, that is. It's very, you know, honestly German. Um, but this clasp is just kind of noncommittal. It's just like a, a, a soft-lined mess. And I just, I'm not in love. And I'm also not in love with it functionally because every time you pop this open, you need to apply pressure. That's how it works. Um, and similarly, to shut it again, you need to apply a certain amount of pressure against your wrist. It's not super comfortable. And I've come to realize I do prefer something with buttons on it so that it's just not an issue. Um, the other thing that I don't love is the lack of quick adjust. And I said this last time. But it's, you know, it's really frustrating. Um, they give you a diver's extension that I have not used once except to show off the uh, the mechanical movement and get the bracelet out the way. This is just not stellar. Um, I really wish they'd included instead like a quick adjust system, like your Rolex glide lock or even a quick link sort of affair. Um, you can adjust this, for instance, if your wrist swells up, but doing so needs a spring bar tool. And no nobody's got one of those on them. So that's a little unpleasant. This clasp, I just don't love. It could even be ugly. Um, so yeah, I'm still not a big fan of the clasp. And um, yeah, I think that leads us to the ugly here. The ugly on this watch is a little bit on the personal side. Not everybody's bothered by it, but the accuracy here is to me ugly. And this is a fact of life in a mechanical watch. This guy started off at about minus five seconds a day, which is kind of rough to my opinion anyways, it's pretty good for mechanicals. Um, but then uh, abruptly it moved to about minus 10 seconds a day and it's been consistently there for a while. And that's just not good. That means you're down 30 seconds every three days. You're down a minute a week basically. And I don't love that. Sure, I could take it to a watchmaker and I'm sure they could regulate it so that it was running damn near perfect. But the thing is, the fact that it's not only a little bit inaccurate but it's inaccurate and subject to change without, you know, I, I didn't hit the watch, I didn't magnetize the watch. It just, that bugs the crap out of me. And so as a result, I feel like I can't really trust the time on this watch. And as a result, I've been wearing quartz a lot more often than I wear this guy. And so that's kind of the big ugly for me is that even though this is a great watch and I would love to see this watch with a nice high accuracy quartz movement in it, as it is with the spinny gears and whatnot, even the heart and soul, even the joy of the spinny gears just isn't enough to outweigh that for me in my life. And so actually, I'm filming this guy, this uh, little follow-up here, shortly after I've listed this watch for sale. So uh, anyways, uh, let me go to the final verdict here. So the final verdict here is that if you love mechanicals and you're willing to put up with the quirks that come along with it, you're probably gonna love this watch. The worst thing I can really say, I mean, there's a lot of good here, like I said in the review, and the worst thing I can probably say about it is that this clasp is just not stellar. But it's fine, functionally speaking. I wore it with this bracelet for a long time, and I liked it a lot. I mean, they could definitely do better, but it's not so bad off. And so, as a mechanical watch, this is a great watch, and I really, you know, I, I really like it. But the thing is, for me, um, the, the verdict is, unfortunately, it's not a good thing. Um, and that's, I guess, because at the end of the day, I really do believe, like I said in my video, that Quartz is the best choice for my EDC. Um, it's got all the issues of mechanicals, and I know all the mechanical guys are going crazy again right now, but it just it doesn't work for me. Um, and so this is a watch that if somebody offered me, you know, okay, Nick, we will put a high accuracy perpetual calendar quartz movement in this watch for you for 200 bucks, I would do it in a heartbeat. You can keep the old spinny gears because then I would be absolutely over the moon with this watch, ideally with a better clasp. But, you know, unfortunately, I realized that this is my first serious mechanical and it's also going to be my last one. From here out, I think for me, my own little bit of weirdness, the fact that I deal with magnets a lot, the fact that I really like accuracy is going to keep me from going there again. And so, yeah, that's the split verdict. If you love mechanicals, you're probably going to absolutely love this watch. But if you don't love mechanicals, there's not a lot of reason to go here. Functionally speaking, it's taken a lot of compromises for the spinning gears. So um, there you go. I hope this has been an interesting follow-up for you. Um, I'm, in many ways, I'm going to miss the idea of this watch, but practically speaking, the functional execution, well, there's a little bit more trouble here, 
for me, and a little bit more lack of trust from the internals than I feel like it's kind of worth. So, great watch. I'll be sad to see it go, but not that sad at the end of the day, I guess. I uh, hope this is interesting. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.